Courage. Lafayette had courage. On April the 20th, 1777, he weighs anchor from Las Paseas, Spain, aboard a boat he bought. Sailed the Atlantic to America, sight unseen. 19 years old. His formidable father-in-law, the Duke Diane, ordered him not to go. Lafayette respected him, wanted his respect, probably more than any other person, he wanted the respect of his father-in-law. Victor Frankl said, between stimulus and response, there is a space. That space is where, that space is where freedom dwells. You have choice in that space. Lafayette decided he had to go to America. That his father-in-law would never respect him if he did not go to America. This is psychological courage. Professor Daniel Putman, University of Wisconsin, Fox Valley, says this is the term for facing inner demons, inner fears. There's also, Putman says, physical courage, where you face down fear of death or harm. Think Lafayette, very deliberate, rushing to battle at the Battle of Brandywine. And then there's moral courage. At the risk of rejection, you stand up for what's right. In August 1784, Lafayette visits his good friend George Washington in Mount Vernon, and Lafayette talks about slavery, suggests Washington could steer the country perhaps toward emancipation. Courage has been a topic of debate since the Greeks and the Romans. Plato and the Republic said it was synonymous with perseverance. Aristotle in the Nicomachean Ethics said courage was necessary to pursue any noble cause and the touchstone to all the other virtues. Cicero said courage was habit of mind necessary to wisdom, justice, and temperance. None of these definitions defines courage as the absence of fear, nor is courage just fear-faced. It is fear faced down. It's what you do despite fear. However you define it, Lafayette had it. Tell me this, can courage be inherited? There's evidence that it can. Listen up. At risk of data overload, consider just two intrigues, two pieces of evidence on behalf of the argument courage is heritable. That what you do courageously can be passed on to your children genetically. Now this is different from your children parroting behavior because they see you act that behavior. This is courage inborn. Patient SM046, that's how they refer to her, patient SM046, she feels no fear. She is American. She was identified in 1994. She's an extrovert, overly friendly, invades your space. She doesn't sense the aggression in your tone, which suggests that she back off. She feels no sense of urgency at the sight of gun or knife threatening. She has orbach withies disease, or lipoid prognosis. This is hereditary, rare. 400 cases worldwide, maybe. The MRI shows destruction of the amygdala. Plural, amygdalas or amygdalae. Do you say homage or homage? The amygdala are part of the temporal lobes, part of the limbic system, one on either side of the brain, the behavior part of the brain. The amygdala senses fear and triggers response. Mutations on chromosome 1Q21.2 destroy these little P-shaped nubbins. No fear. This suggests there may be a continuum from no fear at one end of the extreme to a heightened psychotic sense of threat on the other and courage in between. 
that bully coming your way. Gird your amygdala. It's also, here's the, here's the second piece of data that's interesting. It's possible that genes can be toned in mother and father and then passed on. Courage practiced may perfect, or more accurately, improve the genes that allow a person to face fear. These genes, improved by habit, can be passed on. This is called epigenetics. Take some mice. Rats are too surly. Let the mice smell acetophenone. It's got a fruity smell to it. Pair this smell with a little shock. Not a whopper shock, just an uncomfortable buzz. Such that, whenever exposed to the smell, the mice retreat. They fear. Here's the interesting part. Progeny. The children of those mice, when exposed to the acetophenone, never having smelled it before, retreat. They feel the fear. It's possible, therefore, that this could work in reverse. Your habit of courage may perhaps pass on to your children. Given this possibility, or at least its potential, we study Lafayette's ancestry with a fresh view.